Everybody has this image in their mind of what grizzly bear work is. It's romanticized, you know, everything is focused on the idea of actually getting to interact with bears or see bears. And that is the icing on the cake, but what they don't see is all the hard work, um, long hours and dirty work involved with grizzly bears. Grizzly bear trapping, uh, it, it's not pretty. To get bears to a site, uh, essentially it's all about stink. What we use is roadkill, we use all natural bait. Bears are really quick learners. In fact, most things it takes them one time um, and they figure it out. We've had seven different bears identified on our bait sites. We've gotten one to walk into a trap. The bear that we caught today, we have tons of pictures of him. He is stretched out to his tippy toes and he's eating everything he can reach and he even entered the trap, but he's not gonna pull the trigger bait. And so at that point, for us to be effective, we actually had to try to elevate our game and try to fool them a little bit. And so we put snares in the ground. I would never thought that was a bear. A snare is a, a thick cable um, that they step on a trigger that's hidden in the ground and it goes off and there's a throw arm attached to it that throws the, the uh, snare up around their foot and then they're, then they're captured at that point. You got it. You're always nervous when you are going to fire the dart. I mean, for a lot of reasons. You want the bear mobilized as quickly and safely as possible. You don't want to miss. I saw it flat. Yeah, you are always worried about missing or the dart not going off or you know, all sorts of things. Being the person responsible for shooting the dart always makes you nervous. We're always armed. We always have bear spray. As far as in and out of the vehicles, there's simple things as far as doors are always left open in case we have to get back in the vehicle, but only the doors that people get out of are left open. The vehicles are always backed into the site so that if we need to get in and leave, it's a quick exit. We do heavy signing around all of our bait sites as far as for the general public or so that people know that we're in the area so that if anybody in the public comes in, they're aware, hey, there's a bear capture effort going on in this area. We have the bear on the ground. We uh, it's kind of a free doctor's visit for him. Most of the bears that we capture are going to leave here with uh, a radio collar on or a, a transmitter. We're gonna to wanna to scoot the whole thing back, back that way. way. Yeah. A beautiful bear, really good body condition, like really good muscle mass on him. A little more, one more? One more. His coat was beautiful, uh, really a large head. 296.5. He's a perfect example of what a young male grizzly bear should look like in quality habitat. Beautiful bear. He's starting to move, guys. That's what I'm saying here. When it starts to recover, it recovers essentially from the head. Okay. And then works down the body. He'll start rolling his tongue. His eyes will kind of start moving a little bit. And then as it increases, as, as his recovery increases, he'll start kind of lifting his head. Once the head starts coming up and stuff starts happening, you need to have a plan on what you're going to do and implement it. You gotta swing up, Dan? Yep. yep. We gotta get that out of there. The bear is picked up. He's put inside one of our, the holding cages, the culvert traps that we've said, and he's allowed to lay in there for a number of hours, typically at least five hours before we return back. We hook a rope to the release lever on the trap and then typically run it through a pulley. And then we, have, we run a long rope to a vehicle and we hold onto the rope as we're going away. And as soon as we see the door go up, we drop the rope and drive off a bit. Bears that have been captured for their first time aren't certain what just happened and they're trying to figure out what's going on. And they'll often sit for a few minutes or do something like that before uh, they run out. Whereas other bears, as soon as the door goes up, they're gone like a shot. Some bears are definitely walking, you know, thousand miles in a summer for certain. The distances these bears cover and why they do it, it continually raises so many questions as far as we always think like we're starting to get a glimpse of what they're doing and then something new will come up and it blows your mind. A bear that we would potentially capture here today uh, in a month from now could be in the heart of Yellowstone. Every year we see bears show up in places that we haven't had reports of them before. And we have a really healthy grizzly bear population in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. My whole life, grizzly bears have been protected. They've always been this iconic species that is kind of hidden or really secretive and there's not a lot known. And we're starting to uncover a lot of that to actually see them be on the edge of where they've recovered enough to where they don't need to be listed is a cool thing to be a part of.